my name's Karen Harris and it's the 24th of April 2023 and we're in Sheringham Avenue in Little Ilford in London um, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about this piece of work that I made around about 2017 2018 um, the way it came about was I wandered into Manor Park Library and I noticed there was a group of women engaged in sewing and embroidery and it looked really interesting and I went up to the tutor who was Sonia and she said anybody can come along anybody can join so that's what I did so this is my very first piece of work that I made and Sonia was working on the method that is called camphor which is stitching through up to three maybe more pieces of cloth to make them more quilt like it's a way of using up um, old fabrics particularly used in the Indian South uh, subcontinent. So this was my first piece of work and I was a little bit daunted by the fact that Sonia gave me a huge piece of fabric, three pieces of fabric that had to be stitched together um, and I think if I remember rightly she suggested maybe drawing a tree which is what I did and a lot of other people did the same and as I had quite recently been to a May Morris exhibition at the William Morris House in Walthamstow, I was really taken with her embroidery style and her designs. So then I um, made my own design of the flowers and the vines. Uh, it's not a copy, it's not a copy of an original, it's my own design, but it's based loosely on May Morris's uh, way of working and her designs really. And that in itself took quite a long time to do because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so it had to be not symmetrical, but balanced. So I did the design and then I started stitching and I hadn't stitched or sewn, certainly hadn't done hand embroidery since I was at school, since I was at primary school. So basically all of the stitching, it's very, very simple running stitch, seed stitch, uh, maybe a little bit of back stitch. There's certainly nothing complicated. So it's just an effective use, I think, of very simple stitching. Um, I think at the time, I wasn't entirely sure of the camphor method. So if you look closely at the leaves, um, there's a lot of detail in them, um, lots of different shades of green, and each leaf, I think, is different to the next. But the reason that it, they are so complicated and it looks quite busy is because I didn't know or didn't think to actually block the leaves out and just fill them in and then do the camphor work on the outside and in and out of the vines. I actually made the whole piece a camphor piece. So in a way it's unique and it's not really I think what I was supposed to do but it's quite an unusual effect. And when it comes to the birds, I drew the birds and stitched them. Again if you look closely at them, from a distance they do look like they've been blocked in but you can actually see individual stitches next to each other, which if you were blocking in, you wouldn't see. And it looks like I've deliberately done that. And I think it was only because I didn't know how to do anything else, if you know what I mean. So um, that's it, really. I'm also very interested in the process of how things like this are made. And I'm very intrigued and fascinated by the fact that when you are stitching and sewing, you're actually stitching bits of... It's hard to explain, but you're stitching bits of yourself and your memory into it. So, for example, if I look at certain at certain parts of this now, I can actually remember where I was because I was obviously stitching it in various locations. I was doing it at home. I, it's been everywhere. It's been to Leicester. It's been to Scotland. I always took it with me and did a little bit while I was away here, there and everywhere. But I can remember where I was when I did little sections of it. Um, and in terms of being interested in the process... I had no idea how to do the tree. Um, I wanted it to look a little bit different. So I started at the bottom and I did these strange sort of diamond shapes with individual stitches. And when I first stitched it, I did the same size, the same shape, going all the way up the trunk, right up to where these branches branch off, right up to there. And then I thought, oops, it's not going to look very good on the branches because it just won't translate that pattern. So I painstakingly undid it all again, right down to about here, and then went back in again and tried to make them go smaller and smaller and smaller until they became almost individual stitches. It's not terribly successful, but that was my intention at the time. 
so it was, it was supposed to, it, I was trying to make it more of a flow into the branches. Um, it took a very long time to make uh, and I'm very proud of it and there you have it, my tree of life based on May Morris. <laughs>